Hey everyone, thanks for joining me here at Taste the Globe. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a cheese board. I want to thank the good people over at Home Euphoria for sponsoring this video and giving me a beautiful cheese board to be working with today. You can find the link to their website in the description of this video. Let's go ahead and gather up all our ingredients and get started. Whenever you're building a cheese board, it's always useful to add some fruit. I typically like to use pears or apples. The sweetness plays really well in contrast to some of the salty flavors from the cheeses. We begin by slicing off the bottom. This is gonna help make it so that the pear stands on its own. Once we remove the bottom of the pear, we're gonna go ahead and slice it vertically. We do this for two reasons. One, so we could fan it out and it looks nice, but also so that your guests can grab individual pieces without the pear falling over. Now this pear was a little small, so we're gonna go ahead and repeat the steps for a second pear. That way everybody is able to get a piece. Once you've sliced your pears and fanned them out, now it's time to position them symmetrically. That way it presents a nice aesthetic look. Apples work very well too. Even tart apples pair well with some cheeses. Now we're gonna be adding some grapes. I always like to use more than just one variety so that you have some different flavors to work with, but also the different colors are gonna help prevent you from having a monochromatic looking uh, board. The first cheese I'm gonna be using today is a young pecorino that has chopped up pieces of chili in it. It gives a little bit of heat. Keep in mind that pecorino comes from sheep's milk, so it can be a little bit gamey. Now when you have a beautiful looking wedge of cheese like this, I like to just cut a couple of slices that are tasters for guests to sample. Then you're able to cut more individual pieces. This prevents your board looking like it's a store-bought, factory-sealed cheese board. One of my favorite things about the Home Euphoria cheese board is that it has, has this built-in drawer that houses all your various cheese knives. Now these knives are great for cutting hard, semi-hard cheese, and there's even a spreader for soft cheese. When you're dealing with cheeses like Pecorino, all the different ages are huge factors to the flavor profile that you're gonna get. So for my next cheese, I'm gonna be using a slightly older Pecorino. Now my other Pecorino here is a little on the large side, so I'm gonna go ahead and slice this in half and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing that I did for the other one. I'm gonna cut a little sample, that way my guests can try a piece before they decide if they wanna serve themselves a little bit more. Having different textures is a very important element to having a successful cheese board. Now one of my pecorinos is a semi-soft cheese and the other one is semi-hard. So now I wanna go for a very hard cheese and I'm gonna use some organic Parmesan Reggiano. Now this wedge is obviously very large and if I use the whole thing, it's gonna take up my whole board. Slicing hard cheese can get a bit messy. So to make things a little bit easier on my guests, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-slice this. One of the knives that came with my board is what is often referred to as a putty knife. And you basically just push down to get yourself nice, beautiful, clean looking slices. The rounded out grooves in this board are perfect for layering things such as a sliced cheese. These grooves are also perfect for items such as mixed nuts or breadsticks. Anything that you basically don't want to have to worry about rolling off of your cheese board. The next cheese I am going to be using today is a smoked cheddar. Now the smokiness from this cheese is going to pair very well with the wine that I plan to serve with this cheese board. There are a lot of different elements on this cheese board that would play well with different types of wine. A good Prosecco would play really well with the different fruity notes, but today I am going to be enjoying a nice Chianti. As I mentioned earlier, texture is what really makes a nice rounded out cheese board. It's always important to have at least one very soft cheese. The type of soft cheese that you decide to use is 100% up to you. It totally depends just upon your palate and what you think your guests might enjoy. Today, I am going to be using some goat cheese. Now goat cheese is very soft and it could get a little bit messy, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in its wrapper. That way it's easier to handle for my guest. Now you're gonna need a utensil to spread your soft cheese. Luckily, a nice soft cheese spreader is one of the items that's included in the Home Euphoria bamboo cheese board. To make things easier and also pleasing to the eye, I'm going to insert the spreader into the cheese. That way guests know that that is its purpose. Every cheese board needs some kind of bread element, whether you're using breadsticks, crostinis, 
Melba toast, crackers, whatever it is, you want to have some kind of bread involved. So today I'm going to be using some whole wheat breadsticks. The built-in grooves of this board make it the perfect place to hold my breadsticks. Now it's time to add our meats. This mortadella, which is a round slice, simply fold it in half and fold it again and it gives you this nice little triangle shape. Repeat the process and layer them. Prosciutto is one of those meats that's notorious for being difficult to serve. So whenever I have a piece, I wrap it around on itself and I set that whole piece down. Having the individually wrapped slices is gonna make things a lot more easier for my guests to serve themselves and it also serves to fill in the empty spaces on your board. Now when it comes to choosing what cured meats you're gonna use on your board, it really is just a matter of preference. I just personally happen to love prosciutto and mortadella. Now in a very important final element that we're gonna be adding today is honey. Honey or some kind of fruit compote is very important to pair with any hard cheeses, especially if you're planning on serving something such as Parmesan, which can be very assertive and salty. Now all that's left is to garnish your board. You can use a lot of different items to garnish, such as bay leaves. Some people like to sprinkle walnuts on top. Today, I'm gonna to be using some fresh rosemary. Now I have fresh rosemary growing in my garden, so it's the perfect item to add a little bit of color and round out my board to really make it look beautiful. We now have all the elements for a delicious cheese board. Be creative and try your own flavors. Just make sure to have some opposing flavors and different textures to make yourself a beautiful cheese board, such as this one. As you can see, making a well-balanced and aesthetically pleasing cheese board is actually quite simple. Don't forget to click on the link in the description of this video so you could get one of these beautiful cheese boards for yourself. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Bye.